guys, it's Ginger. I'm here with another music review. As promised, last week, <laughs> I am reviewing the new Def Leppard album. Uh, Self-titled album. Let me give you a little backstory. Um, I fell in love with Def Leppard. I am a fan, but I will say this. My favorite stuff in Def Leppard is from the 80s. Um, from probably about, like my very, like I discovered them when, in 87 when they came out with Hysteria. Okay, I had heard of them when they came out with Pyromania, but that was like in 1983 and I was uh, 10 years old. So I wasn't quite into rock music when I was 10 years old, I was more into country music. So, but I had heard of them and things like that. I knew that the only reason in 1983 that Pyromania hadn't hit number one on the Billboard charts was because of Thriller, Michael Jackson's Thriller. So, I discovered them in 87, 88 when um, Hysteria was so popular. And... I'm the type of person, when I really like some music, I'm going to go back and listen to their earlier stuff. So I did go back and listen to their earlier stuff. I love On Through the Night. I love High and Dry. I like Pyromania. I like Hysteria. Now, Pyromania and Hysteria were Mutt Lang came in. And you started to hear that, that typical Def Leppard sound that they're now known for. Um, that kind of wall of background vocals and things like that. Um, and I liked all that, you know, but I also liked their earlier stuff when they were still sort of like the British invasion, the, the new wave of British heavy metal. I liked, what was it? Adrenalize came out in 92. That was pushing it a little bit for me. Now, that was that they were making that album when Steve Clark died. That was pushing it for me. I didn't really care for much of anything that they did in the 90s. Uh, the last thing that I think they did was uh, Songs from the Sparkle Lounge, which was what, 2002 or something like that? I'll put the date if I'm wrong. Anyway, so I didn't really care for anything between Adrenalize and Adrenalize is pushing it. Anything from Adrenalize to today. I didn't really care for any of that new music until this came out. This came out October 30th. I really, really like this. Um, the first two songs that are on the album, you've got 14 tracks in total. The first two songs that are on the album, which are Let's Go and Dangerous, have that typical, what you're used to, Def Leppard sound, okay? That we know from Pyromania, from Hysteria, from Adrenalize, things like that. That typical sound that everybody's gonna, everybody who is a Def Leppard fan, uh, or who is a moderate fan, or somebody who just kind of likes their music, will be used to, will be comfortable with, things like that. The rest of this album doesn't sound like typical Def Leppard. Uh, it still sounds like Def Leppard, but to me it reminds me more of the youthful Def Leppard. Um, prior to uh, pyromania. Um, there is so much on here that is so good. My two favorite, two favorite songs are Man Enough, which has, it, it, from the very beginning, it's heavy bass line. Like, they're really displaying Rick Savage, Rick Savage's, um, uh, bass playing in it. it. It's out there in front. It really reminds me of Queen, like 70s era Queen. Um, and then also another song, the next song that's on there, the, the fourth track on here is called We Belong. And I really like this one at first, you know, 
like uh, Joe Elliott sings the first line, the lead singer Joe Elliott sings the first line, and then the second line comes, and I'm like, wait a minute, that's not Joe's voice. Who is that singing? And then so you open it up, and you're like, oh my god, all the guys in the band are singing lead at some point in the, that song. It's great. They're all incredible singers, which, I mean, you gotta be a really good singer to be a background singer anyway. You know, background singers don't get a lot of credit, but huh, have you ever tried to sing oohs and ahs and stuff like that along with a song on the radio? It ain't easy to do. So, clearly, they were all really great singers to begin with, but everybody sings a part in this. Sav, Rick Allen, Viv Campbell, Phil Collin, everybody sings a line in this. So it was really exciting. And I also liked uh, Battle of My Own and what was it called? Wings of an Angel. It's so good. So good. So it's probably, I think I looked it up the other day. It's been seven years since they put out new material. I think that that was when but when songs from the Sparkle Lounge came out. I think that's when it was. Um, but it's really, really good. And I've been hearing murmurs that that this was taking you back to the heyday. Um, but it really is. It's really good. There's not a bad song in here. Again, like I said last week, we live in a day and age where uh, artists will typically make just uh, three or four, <laughs> if you're lucky, songs that are single worthy and the rest of it will be full of filler and fluff and throwaway songs. This isn't one of those albums. This is good from beginning, beginning to end. They all contributed to the writing of the songs on this album. Um, they uh, co-produced it with someone named Ronan McHugh, who I don't have, I don't know anything about that person, but, uh, so they co-produced this. So, I'm loving it. Check it out. Now, I would love to be able to play some clips of these songs for you, but I don't want the, uh, YouTube, um, YouTube copyright police to get their knickers in a twist. So, I am going to link a video, it's about a seven minute video that Def Leppard have put on their official YouTube page that is a uh, highlight of all the songs so you can get a taste of all the songs that are on this album before you buy it because you know sometimes it's good to give it a little old listen before you buy something. So this will at least give you a taste so I'll have that linked below. And that's everything for this video. Don't forget to give this a thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so that you can come back and sit for a spell. And I am going to have another music review next week, too. I'm going to do country music this time. It's going to be Alabama's new album, which I'm looking forward to. It's been 14 years since they've put out new music. So uh, don't forget to keep an eye peeled for that, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Uh, I'm a Prime member on Amazon, so you get free shipping on everything, but they've stopped shipping their CDs in boxes, and now they ship them in soft mailers, and this is what happens. Bleep. There you go. Like, the outside of this is perfectly fine. Not a crack. But this is all broken right here. Maybe it was Amazon's fault. Maybe it's a problem in the manufacturers. I don't know. Anyway, all of and the CD won't stand. It's a pain in my butt.